And joining us for this week's Your Health segment is Dr. Peter Crino, professor of neurology at the University of Maryland School of Medicine and chair of the Department of Neurology at the University of Maryland Medical Center. Doctor, thank you for being with us. Thanks, Jeff. It's good to be here. I saw in the notes, and uh, this was very disconcerting, that we our brains begin to lose function after age 50. That is true. So as you age and get beyond the age of about 40 to 50, certain things change in the brain. The number of neurons diminishes. So our brain is comprised of millions of nerve cells called neurons. Uh, these begin to diminish in number over time. Moreover, the way the neurons connect and talk to one another also begins to diminish over time. Uh, and this is just part of the normal aging process. You say that completely unconcerned like a guy who has not hit 50 yet. I, I have indeed hit that mark. Have and you, I, I have indeed. All right. Have you noticed anything? I have, I have. So what I've noticed is what many individuals will notice over the age of 50 uh, is the appearance of the so-called senior moment when you can't think of the name of a movie or a place you've been and then for no particular reason five minutes later it suddenly pops back into your head. What's going on there? Well, so a lot of people are concerned that the senior moment suggests that you may have early Alzheimer's disease or a type of dementia. Um, and it's really not true. It's actually very common for individuals over the age of 50 to begin to experience difficulties putting uh, names to things. And it's largely because, let's face it, our 50 plus year old brains are fairly crowded with information. That's we're often it. And we're so much smarter than we uh, used to be. Too. Absolutely. We're clearly getting wiser as we get older. So, um, how can somebody maximize their abilities over time? Knowing that we're, we're racing uphill a little bit, what can we do? So there's very good evidence that uh, cognitive function, memory, uh, abstract reasoning can be maintained much the way you would keep your body in shape by working out or running or, or uh, swimming. Uh, doing exercises with your mind can actually help to keep your mind sharp, to diminish the frequency of seizure moments, and actually to forestall the onset of certain dementing illnesses such as Alzheimer's disease. So examples of things you can do in your 50s and 60s and 70s is learn to play a new musical instrument, uh, learn a new language, keep yourself active by doing crossword puzzles or other uh, cognitive games of skill. Do things that are keep, gonna keep your mind sharp and are gonna require you to use all the faculties that you have. Uh, there's very good evidence that that will keep, you, uh, keep your mind pretty healthy. A lot of people out there are doing crossword puzzles and the, the hope, not for enjoyment necessarily, but in the hope that it's gonna have long-term benefits. Well, what is the evidence? So there is some evidence that keeping your brain active with cognitive performance will essentially allow the connections between the nerve cells to stay viable so that nerve cells can continue to talk to each other effectively. And really, that's the substance of what our cognitive behavior is. Uh, amazingly, there's also very good evidence that a moderate amount of physical exercise also helps brain uh, activity, also helps with brain health and can make you feel uh, sharp and keep your memory crisp. We hear dementia and Alzheimer's used almost interchangeably, mm -hmm. are, are they? So they're not quite interchangeable. So dementia is a very broad term that refers to a progressive decline in a number of spheres of neurological functions, which include memory, abstract reasoning, um, thinking, rationality, and sometimes even behavior. There are many different types of dementia. Alzheimer's disease is the most common type of dementia in the United States and indeed probably worldwide, affecting more than 10% of adults over the age of 65. There are also vascular dementias, traumatic dementias, and other genetic forms as well. Let me remind our viewers, if you have a question for the neurologist, give us a call. We'll have the number up on the screen. Or tweet your questions. The Twitter address is at MPT News. So if, if what's happening is sort of a biological process, we still have all the brain cells. It's a matter of the connections. Is there anything medically or even nutritionally supplements that, that would truly make a difference. Yeah, unfortunately, there's no quick fixes for this, and uh, there uh, is no way that we have any kind of simple pill that you can take that's gonna make brain function preserve, be preserved during age. However, there's very good evidence that changing our behaviors uh, can affect our uh, mental function and our cognitive performance. So simple things like not smoking cigarettes, watching our weight and avoiding obesity, keeping ourselves active, eating a heart-healthy diet, such as a diet low in saturated fats, the Mediterranean diet, uh, can absolutely be associated with improvements in cognitive performance and really just sustaining your overall performance as you get into your 70s and 80s.
who is most susceptible, in addition to somebody who's not getting any stimulus and maybe no exercise and not eating right? I mean, are, are there different uh, socioeconomic groups or, or, or ethnic groups that are more susceptible to these problems? Sure, no, that's a good question. Um, it's, it's very clear that individuals who have uh, high blood pressure or hypertension have hypercholesterolemia, so elevated amounts of cholesterol in the blood, who have obesity, um, who smoke cigarettes, and who use alcohol excessively. Uh, basically, there are damaging effects on the central nervous system, on the brain, that lead to compromises in brain function. Uh, interestingly, the incidence of dementia is higher in women than it is in men. Part of that is just because women live a little bit longer than men, so the, the disease can present itself. Uh, but there may be other factors uh, as well. So there's clearly some susceptibilities uh, across patients. The other area that's very interesting is that there are certain genetic conditions, gene mutations in genes known as presenilin-1 or amyloid precursor protein, that can cause very early onset Alzheimer's disease, even in the 40s and 50s. Lastly, there are so-called risk genes, which are basically genes that you have that give you or confer a higher risk of Alzheimer's disease. And the one that's been in the press very often is a gene called APOE4. If you have this gene, you don't necessarily uh, have a future with Alzheimer's disease, but your risk is much higher. Let's take a phone call in Montgomery County. This is Yvonne. Uh, Yvonne, thank you for the call. Go ahead. Hi, I, I work a night shift uh, for the last three years or so. I've noticed a drastic decrease in memory um, in the last, particularly in the last year. I know I'm not getting enough sleep, but this, uh, this lack of sleep it accelerates the um, memory loss. Great question. Thank you very much. That is indeed a great question. And it is a true statement that uh, sleep is vitally important for our normal intact cognitive function. And we all have had the experience when we haven't had adequate amounts of sleep. Uh, it's easy to forget things. It's easy to sort of not be as sharp as we ought to be. And so, yes, having appropriate what's called sleep hygiene, which is basically getting the standard seven, eight hours of sleep at night and resting, not staying up crazy late hours, and then trying to get up and go to work and, you know, drink five cups of coffee. Uh, it's clearly better for your brain health. Uh, one more call. Caroline County, uh, this is CJ. CJ, thank you for the call. Go ahead. Uh, thank you for taking my call. Uh, I have my mother and my mother's sister uh, have Alzheimer's. I'm 66, and I'm concerned about my proclivity for Alzheimer's. Is there any trials or anything that uh, I can get involved with to see whether it's a problem? Thank you so much for the call. Got to be a common situation. Very common situation. So the presence of a primary relative, so a grandparent, a parent, or a sibling who has Alzheimer's disease does indeed confer an, an, a higher risk of Alzheimer's disease. The critical issue really for the caller is, are you having changes in your cognitive function that are interfering, interfering with your daily activity? Indeed. One of the heralding features of dementia is that the progressive change in your cognitive function begins to really make your activities of daily living not quite feasible anymore. You can't balance your checkbook. You can't drive your car because you get lost. You have difficulty with social engagements. At that point, do people know there's something going on? Or, well, or do you tend to... Some well, try to ignore it. Yeah, well, a lot of people do. A lot of people say, uh, you know, maybe I'm just tired, maybe I'm just overworked. Uh, but the truth of the matter is that if uh, listeners uh, and viewers think that there are changes in your brain function that are affecting how you do your activities of daily living, so you just can't do what you normally used to be able to do, it's at least worthy of a question to your primary care doctor and maybe even an evaluation by a neurologist. Dr. Peter Crino, University of Maryland School of Medicine, University of Maryland Medicine. Medical Center. Doctor, thank you very much for the visit. Thanks, Jeff. Your health segments are a co-production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System.